35 years. It has been approximately 35 years since I first desperately wanted He-Man Masters of the Universe Wind Raider. Well, here we are today in 2019, not the early 80s, and I finally have one thanks to Mega Constructs, now a division of Mattel, finally putting one out. And I also have a very derpy looking He-Man. Let me get these things opened and show you what they look like. First, the Wind Raider itself. This is a 198 piece set that does come with both figures shown there. The He-Man with Battle Axe and Skeletor with Sword. There are no stickers in this set, so anything that looks like a decoration is a print. And unfortunately, the bags were not numbered. Now, it's not such of a big deal in a small set like this, but it is strange for me after celebrating wildly the introduction of numbered bags to Mega, uh, that, uh, well, we seem to have lost them. Ah, this is just so glorious. So, so glorious to actually have this. Although, it's not hitting all of the nostalgia buttons for me, because this is actually better scaled to the, the depiction in the cartoons than it is to the toy, and the original toy. And I guess my mind's eye expects the toy proportions more. This is funny how that works. But yeah, this is this is pretty proper with the ridiculously bright yellow colors used for all of the control surfaces of the thing. He man fits right in there and is able to hold on to the controls. He's got a little heads-up display which does not have any print on it, but you see that there are plenty of prints all around this thing. It went together just fine. Uh, some marbling for the the color of the, the flame coming out the exhaust there, which is pretty good. Uh, let's see, this can be turned side to side. You can't change the angles of the elevators. You can rotate these if you want, up and down a bit. You can also turn the, you have to pull this out to independently change the angle of the, the edge of the, the feathers there. And it has the working winch up front with the anchor. I almost, I almost completely forgot that they used an anchor. That's such a funny thing, but you know, the combination of future and medieval. But this, this actually does work. Uh, there we go. Winds out like so, and winds right back in, just like the original did. Uh, I think the original had a had a ratchet, if I recall correctly. This one does not. Doesn't uh, doesn't stay at that finished position, but I think I remember the original not always wanting to stay at the centered position all the same. Huh. Well, anyway, it is what it is. I don't remember if they had a particular canonical in-universe name for that anchor, but, you know, it works and everything, and these edges here are bar-sized, so you can actually attach a figure to that if you want to do a rescue or something. If you got bar-sized bits on the edges here so you can attach things there as well so that's good uh can't really attach anything else to the sides of the engines so you can't have somebody else hitching a ride other than holding on to the wings or the or the anchor there but i think that's okay and all importantly this does have two wheels on the on the bottom i don't remember if the original had just two wheels or if it had like three or something but this has two wheels on it so it's able to roll around and you can just see those there they're just hard plastic which is fine it's kind of what you expect it's a wind raider and i have it <laughs> at last it's pretty cool let's take a closer look at this version of he-man who has the uh probably exclusive darker colored eyebrows you'll see on the uh, maker constructs heroes version that they have a different lighter color now i wish that i had an original he-man figure i do not i never had an original he-man figure i only had a prince adam and a man at arms however somehow i'm assuming through trading with a friend who had lots and lots of the figures i did get a hold of an original battle axe and somehow i still have that original battle axe so for the sake of scale this <laughs> will help to show you the difference in size between the original figures and these new ones, these little 
micro action figures as they call them. This is done pretty well. It's definitely a far more believable scale than the original figures, which were just caricature, just super deformed. This is actually done pretty decently well for something this small. The eyes aren't terrible. I mean, I think they look much better in, in person than they do here. You can see there's a little bit of offset with the, the white of the eyes, possibly being a little bit low, but not, not too far. It's really difficult at this tiny, tiny scale to get things right. The lower legs uh, are actually molded in that kind of uh, burgundy color, is it? This is slightly reddish brown. And then they just have a little bit of paint application of the flesh tone towards the tops of them, which is pretty well matched to the plastic of the flesh. Yeah, all, all told, this is pretty well done. Skeletor is also not half bad, um, especially at a reasonable distance. I mean, here you're looking at it super close at HD resolution, and so you can see the little blemishes around the edges of the painting for the face. But in in real life, it actually looks very good. It looks like it's glowing. Now, the face does not glow in the dark, unfortunately. It's a little bit of a missed opportunity there. But it looks like it's glowing in the day because they first apply a very bright neon green and then put a yellow over that and then finish it off once that's completely dry with a dark red to give the gap between the teeth and also for the eyes. So that's really nice. And the the color for the skin looks right to me. Uh, it almost looks like it's shaded just because of the, the texture of that material and just how much light it takes into it. You know, it's a it's little bit of translucency that uh, affects the light as it, as it hits it. Uh, man, it just looks like it has more depth than it actually does. It's nicely done. Uh, it's too bad about the power sword being a complete one here. You know, it's... It's the same mold as He-Man's complete one, which is another slightly missed opportunity for, you know, the true classic fans who remember the the mini comics that would come with the figures and such. You know, and not to mention the fact that the original figures had the half sword versions. So you can't combine this with He-Man's version, you know, to take on uh uh Trap Jaw! Trap Jaw! I keep wanting to say raw job, but no, trap jaw. You know, that was that was the one that I remember. That was the one that I looked through <laughs> way too many times. Yeah, so a little bit of missed opportunity there given that especially this is a, a construction toy, you know, but it looks pretty good. And uh, you know, being able to actually hold it in the tiny hand is a good thing. And he's got the sheath on the back. I don't think this has even been separated yet. Oh it has. There we go. You know, so you can place that there, which is just fine. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good stuff. I especially like how they did the face. Now we're going to look at the individual figures, the separately sold figures that have come in the Mega Constructs Heroes line. Uh, one at a time, there have been four different series so far. Both of these are from Series 1. They are supposed to sell for $5 US, uh, and they do sell for $5 US if you can ever find them. Uh, scalpers are very aggressive about finding them, buying the entire box, and then putting them online for, you know, 10 15 20 dollars each it's a it's a big problem on the left series one he-man uh actually looks much better now out of the box than he did in not nearly as derpy probably even a little bit better than the the one that came in the wind raider except for that one eyebrow that's just off probably both eyebrows are off a little bit in their registration but uh other than that looks pretty good to me notice the lighter colored eyebrows with the dark red he has the buckler there and the power sword. Both of those are a little bit more beige than I remember. I thought they were supposed to be a little bit closer to just a medium silver, but that might just be my memory's eye. And Skeletor has his scepter, the goat, I believe, a uh, ram head of that is a kind of rubbery piece, so the horns don't break off too easily. And that version of Skeletor, just the way that it was produced there, looks better to me with more of the the yellow and green in there. It still has a couple of little blemishes, but uh, just having more coverage, I think, looks better. And these stands! This is my first time opening up any of these Mega Constructs Heroes, uh, from just the regular Heroes line. Uh, these stands are nice! You know, it's just three little pieces, but they're proper. They center the figures, 
it brings in a little bit of color from the theme. In this case, it's that grayscale green. And, you know, there are little names on them. So, yeah, it's all, it's all good. And otherwise, these figures you know, are built the same as the, the ones that we saw in the, the kit version. And I think they're pretty good. So these are the two that came from or came in Series 1. Again, they're sold separately, one at a time. But there's also a He-Man, uh, I forget the name of it offhand, I'll have to grab a box again, but there's a, a collection of all the figures you can get together. There it is, the Battle for Eternia collection. I have seen this for sale on eBay. It does not come with Man-at-Arms, unfortunately. That's a, that's a miss, but it comes with other important characters and also a mini-comic. I need to see that mini-comic, but I'm not going to pay scalper prices for this thing. Mega Constructs Heroes Series 2 brought us Tila and Beast Man. The level of detail on Tila is excellent, but it's unfortunate that the registration for her eyes is just ever so slightly off. It's just rotated ever so slightly. From some angles it looks okay, from a reasonable distance it looks okay, but up close it doesn't. Gosh, you have to be just perfect with those tiny eyes to get it right. It's too bad with such fine printing that they used. Uh, Beast Man's face isn't all that great because the stamp that they used for the, the light, uh, fairly thin white paint for his face left some, some holes, some bubbles in it. Uh, but I, I think that doesn't really cause that much of an issue because his face is not supposed to be smooth anyway. Uh, both of these, I think, look decent, not uh, great, but uh, oh, forgot to mention the scepter for Skeletor had to be built. Looked like it was complete in the package, but he actually had to put it together, which is a cool thing. Same thing with Tila's staff here. Beast Man gets his whip, which is a rubbery piece as well, very flexible. And look at these around the back. Uh, one thing I will point out about all of these figures is they have the the, uh, I don't know what you, what you call these, these pieces. What do you call that? They're like bracelets <laughs> of sorts. They're not bracers, but those pieces that are, that are little clip-ons, uh, they can pop off pretty easily. So actually, if you play with these, those are things to look out for. You don't want to lose those. Even if you're just posing it carefully, you still want to watch out for that. You can definitely see some difference in the colors between the flesh tone of the plastic for Tila and the painted on parts as you can see in the arms, the torso there on the back and also the lower legs have that paint that's used. So that's not quite as well matched as I ideally would like. But that's it for those two. Series 3 included only Faker as a representative from the Masters of the Universe theme. Fortunately this figure is very well done. I never understood Faker when I was a uh, when I was a kid, so this was always a very mysterious character to me, very mysterious figure especially. But I just think this is so well done, and fortunately, the printing for this one on the face is really good. Maybe maybe the eyebrows are off the tiniest fraction, but come on, at that scale, come on. Yeah, this looks really really good to me, and they even printed the chest there. You can see the. The reel to reel that's spin around in there. That's nice to see. I mean, you know, it shows up a little bit, but that's pretty cool. And it comes with, you know, both weapons. Again, the, the body armor bit, the vest bit, has the sheath in the back, so you can place his version of sword back there. Yeah, this is really well done for, you know, especially for a series that only got one of these figures. This was a good choice, desirable for collection. I, I at least I got lucky <laughs> for uh, the printing on this one. The production value is, is pretty close to spot on. And finally, Series 4 of Mega Constructs Heroes was the most important of all, for it includes Man-at-Arms and Evil Lynn. But Man-at-Arms, that's very, very important to me because the very first toy I ever bought in my life with my own money, in fact, probably the first thing that I ever bought of any sort with my own money, was a Man-at-Arms figure. 
I got my, what was it, $2.50, $3, something, something like that, of combined allowance and extra money from doing extra chores, saved up over the course of weeks, and went to the toy store hoping to get a He-Man, and they were fresh out of He-Mans, so I settled for a man-at-arms. And it didn't have a mustache! I was so mad, it made no sense. They were so dumb for not putting a mustache on it. I, I felt not knowing any of the, the backstory of that and only being familiar with the cartoon. So I, you know, took a pen and you know, just a regular ballpoint pen and, uh, yeah, and drew a mustache on my man at arms figure. Now I have a man at arms figure again that came with a mustache. Yes! Evil Inn is also a pretty cool looking figure here. Uh, registration for the eyes on this one is almost perfect. The print is very good there. Again, you build up the staff, and uh, that has a, you can see it has the crystal looking ball at the top is actually a transparent piece with the bright silver colored paint application. Man at Arms has his mace and his laser pistol. I forget the canonical exact name of it, laser blaster or something, but his, uh, his main armor piece is awesome. Really, really nicely done. That's just begging for a tiny, tiny little bit of a very simple, very basic wash. Very subtle wash. But, yeah, good looking stuff. Notice the, the weapons, both of them, have the rectangular shaped uh, openings, holes on them. So that one has it there. This one has it over there. And those allow you to attach those weapons to his back. So if you want to use just one at a time, you can. And yeah, his vest has the two standardized connectors on it, which are also compatible with other things from Mega Constructs. Both of these figures look great all the way around the back. Very nice. Probably the, the best produced, I'd say, of the ones that I've seen so far, with the exception perhaps of just the more armored leg of man at arms which could have used a little bit more opacity for the orange you know it just doesn't quite have that same brightness that you expect and that's it for the mega constructs heroes individual figures for now ah they look great together all the colors facial expressions yes original series inspired but with better proportions you know that aren't as ridiculous as the original 80s versions. Good paint applications for the most part. And they really do look much better in person than they do here. Uh, the farther you the farther you step back, the more perfect they look. The closer you get, the more you see all the many, many tiny imperfections, which really are tiny. And that's it for my very nostalgia heavy look at these for now. Uh, you know, the major problem with these continues to be availability or the lack thereof, combined with the demand-driven uh, aftermarket, you know, scalper market, which is really, really rough on fans. Yeah, it's, it's really, really a shame. If you can find these, get them, hold on to them, if you like them, of course, if you have any interest in these. Which brings me to another question. Who actually is interested in classic Masters of the Universe in 2019? I'm assuming it's mostly folks around my age, uh, or possibly just a little bit older. Because Masters of the Universe has not been relevant for a long time. They did try to bring it back, but nah, it didn't work. Didn't work at all. Tried to bring it back, bring it back to the general con consciousness in general uh, uh, a few times. Didn't work. So yeah, this is this is just for the old folks. I don't mind that, but it's not going to help the bottom line very much, I think, for poor old suffering Mattel is <laughs> having a lot of troubles with, with sales, not to mention distribution. But the products continue to be very good. Very happy with these, and I'm happy to have been able to share this look at them with all of you. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.